to interpret the results of the Bauer Kirby antibiotic susceptibility testing, we're going to be measuring the diameter of zones of inhibition in millimeters using a metric ruler. So make sure you have the metric side up. And remember that from 0 to 1 is 10 millimeters or 1 centimeter. We're measuring this in millimeters. So each tiny little hash on the metric ruler is 1 millimeter. And diameter is from one edge of the circle to the other edge through the center. So we'll notice taking a quick look at this plate of Pseudomonas rigenosa with its characteristic green water soluble pigment that several of the antibiotics have no zone of inhibition. The bacteria are growing right up to the disc. So there's no zone of inhibition. That bacterium is automatically resistant to the antibiotic. Whether the organism is susceptible to the antibiotic resistant or intermediate depends on the diameter of the zone of inhibition. Some of these have a nice clear zone like here that can easily be measured, but you'll also notice that some of these have colonies in the zone, and those are resistant bacteria. Now when we measure, we just hold the ruler up against the bottom of the plate. I'm going to turn this over so you can see the colonies a little bit better. Take the lid off, and you can see around this antibiotic and around this antibiotic, there are distinct colonies in the zone. So we have to do something a little different there. But let's start out with one that has a nice clear zone of inhibition like this gentamicin disc right here. So what we're going to do is take our ruler and we set that up so it goes right through the center of the disc from one edge to the other. And this particular one is measuring 19 millimeters across. So what we would do then for gentamicin, which is labeled GM10 on the disc, we would go to our results page for that bacterium and find gentamicin, GM10, and write the diameter there, which in this case was 19 millimeters. Then, uh, we can go to our interpretation table and find gentamicin. And what we can see here for gentamicin is that if the zone of inhibition is 12 millimeters or less in diameter in this column, the bacterium is resistant. R stands for resistant. In other words, with that small of a zone of inhibition, the antibiotic normally is not effective. However, if we look over here on the right-hand side under S for susceptible, for gentamicin, if it's 15 millimeters or more, the bacterium is susceptible to the antibiotic. Now, we'll also notice that often in between is an intermediate area, 13 to 14, and that means the antibiotic may not work or it may work. But if it's under the S column, susceptible, then that antibiotic should work. Now, this one measured 19 millimeters, so 15 or more susceptible. So this pseudomonas is susceptible to gentamicin. And we do that for each of the discs on the plate. Now, if you remember, I told you that on some of these, there are colonies in the plate. So what we have to do if there are colonies is we have to find the colony that is closest to the disc and then we measure from the colony to the center of the disc, which is the radius, and then we double that to get the diameter. So that's what we look up. We have to find the colony that's closest to the disc. If there's any colonies touching the disc, it's automatically resistant. So again, on any of these where we see colonies, we look around to find the colony that's closest to the disc. We measure from that to the center of the disc to get the radius, then we double that for the diameter. That's if colonies are in the zone. Another thing you might see around some discs on some bacteria are called double zones of inhibition. And that's where there's a completely clear zone surrounded by a hazy zone of partial growth. 
And we can see that on several of these, these three here all are showing some double zone inhibition, but from here on in is totally clear, but then out here we have a hazy zone. Uh, we also see it here. There's a clear zone and then a hazy zone. Now again, we don't normally remove the lid, but I'm going to take the lid off so that you can see that hazy zone a little better. So you can see pretty clearly here that there's a hazy zone right here and then a totally clear zone right here. And we can see that around several of these, a hazy zone followed by a clear zone, a hazy zone followed by a clear zone. So in this case, we would take our ruler and we would measure just the clear zone, the diameter of the clear zone, not the clear and the hazy zone, because <clears throat> the bacteria growing in the hazy zone are resistant bacteria. So also keep your eyes open for double zones of inhibition like we see in a number of cases here. It has to be totally clear like this one to measure the diameter straight.